week we speak to one of the finest thinkers of his generation, the author of international bestsellers including The War on the West, The Strange Death of Europe and The Madness of Crowds. Douglas Murray, you're in Israel. Let's start with the temporary ceasefire and the release of 50 hostages, women and children kidnapped by Hamas. Israel will release 150 Palestinian prisoners convicted well, for a range of crimes including stabbing attacks against police officers. This is a painful but necessary exchange for the Israelis. Um, it is very painful. There is some debate in Israel about how necessary it is. Uh, everybody wants the hostages home, but there's a recognition that what Hamas is doing is a form of water torture uh, of the Israelis. Um, they, they are saying that if in um, a couple of hours in the time of speaking, they may release uh, a number of the hostages that were stolen on October the 7th. Uh, they, uh, the identities of those aren't known publicly. It's, it's meant to be a prioritization of the many children who were abducted, but we already know that many of the children who were abducted are not on the list of names. Uh, to be released. And yes, for every uh, one uh, Jewish child to be released today, uh, the Israelis are swapping three um, Palestinian prisoners. Uh, that is, as you say, people in Israeli prisons for carrying out horrific crimes. Um, and the problem with this, the, the, the added sort of kicker about this is that Israel has seen this before. More than 10 years ago, there was a soldier, Gilad Shalit, mm. who was kidnapped uh, by the Hamas, and he was held for a very long time, and he was swapped by the Israelis for over a 1,000 prisoners in Israeli cells. One of those prisoners was the Hamas leader, Sinwar, who actually planned and carried out the attack of October the 7th. So everybody knows that the lives of every innocent child is, is priceless, uh, but this is coming at a huge price. Now, Douglas, we have seen student-led pro-Palestinian protests in, in Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide this week. You've written, when it comes to Palestine, the kids aren't all right. Explain what you mean by that. Yeah, I was, uh, um, once again, um, not surprised, but very much shocked again by the protests you describe. Um, it's uh, it's it seems to be a generational issue. There's data to show that now that where older people in Australia, America, and Britain, for instance, you know, side with Israel in its fight against terrorism, uh, the younger um, uh, citizens of these free Western democracies seem to be uh, on the side of the terrorists. And it's it's really quite remarkable. I say that, I mean, obviously there's some of the malevolent actors and the ones standing there and there in their fears and things as, as we watch it are doing a form of terrorist chic on the streets of Australia. Mm -hmm. But there are also many other um, uh, people at those protests who I say would perhaps 30 years ago have been at a protest for free Tibet. Remember that, Rita? <laughs> you and I uh, mm, yes. uh, remember that. The <laughs> days when if you wanted to signal that you were a good person, you said free Tibet. And, uh, you know, it turned out that, that uh, well, Tibet remains doggedly unfree. The, the Chinese Communist Party really turned out not to bow to the pressure of a few Devon-based sandal wearers. Um, and they continue to repress the people of Tibet and to hold it. Of course, the situation with free Tibet morphing into this generation has free Palestine is that the free Palestine call is a genocidal call. The rivers to the sea call is a genocidal call. And so, as I write, I hope these young people never get what they actually think they want. Uh, if they want a two-state solution, they should say so. Uh, but that's not what they're saying. Um, they are talking about a Jewish cleared Middle East. And that seems to me to be something they may well come back to regret having uh, called for. But yes, it's a sort of chic thing, it seems, in this in this younger generation, in the same way that Free Tibet was. But there's one other difference which is important to state, which is, of course, one of the reasons that, that Tibet is not free is because the Chinese Communist Party is not vulnerable to uh, students in Melbourne chanting. 
Uh, the Israeli government is, of course, a democratically elected government. It is actually vulnerable to national and international mm. pressure when it grows. And so, uh, you know, th this isn't such a benign uh, call as even some of the people, the better people taking part in these protests might imagine that it is. And it just shocks me that they don't say anything against Hamas. Uh, they don't say anything about freeing the Palestinian people from, from these terrorists of Hamas who've... Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it really is depressing in, in so many ways because they are just on this decolonization stolen land uh, the west is illegitimate uh, bandwagon and they've just uh, slotted this issue in there now i'm interested in your take on pope francis who has been reported as saying that the gaza conflict has gone beyond war he said this is not war this is terrorism douglas there's also some conjecture about whether he also used the uh, the word uh, genocide but the comments, as reported, uh, to me are astonishing. Yeah. Uh, he's both sides in this. He, he's, he's also talking about, you know, we can't have go ahead with passions which in the end will kill everyone, talking about both sides of the conflict. Uh, what do you make of his comments? Yes. It's, it's, it's not that surprising from Pope Francis. I'm not a Catholic, so I don't mind criticizing him as much as some of my Catholic friends do, albeit everyone seems to be rather disappointed with him as a, as a pontiff. Um, yes, as you say, I mean, there's, it's a both sidesism. Uh, you know, there has been terrorism, and it was what was done to Israel on October the 7th. Uh, Israel has retaliated by trying to destroy Hamas. Uh, the Pope should be an expert in relatively straightforward moral delineations. Uh, the delineation between, for instance, actively trying to kill civilians by running into their houses and killing children and, and babies and, and, and parents uh, versus um, the, 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 the terrible, you know, but inevitable byproduct of war, which sometimes comes when the Israelis try to kill Hamas leaders and Hamas fighters and sometimes kill innocent civilians. It, it's, it's quite a straightforward um, and very basic moral difference that is it your intention or is it not? The intention of Hamas is to kill civilians. The intention of Israel is not to kill civilians. It's to kill as absolutely few as, as possible. So it's just very basic moral delineations like that that you have to be able to do. I mean, again, the difference between um, Israelis where it was it was Israelis, well, being gunned down as they asserted their right to just dance or be with their families on the Shabbat um, versus people asserting their right to hold rockets and other munitions under a hospital and then put civilians on top of the hospital in the hopes that your enemy will bomb the hospital. I mean... These shouldn't be complex moral delineations for anyone to be able to make. And the fact that the Pope is struggling with them uh, is a very worrying sign, principally mm. for Catholics worldwide who deserve better. Well, he does appear to be the first woke Pope we've had. We also learned this week that Pope Francis has a group of trans women making a monthly oh. visit to his Wednesday general audiences. They're given VIP seats. So, you know, that's a interesting development right there. <laughs> now, um, an, moving, al uh, moving along... Uh, unexpected coalition, Rita. But but they all like dresses. Oh, yes. Well, there you go. There, there is something they can talk about. Uh, now, moving along from that issue, uh, we've seen some uh, terrible unrest today in Ireland with uh, riots following the stabbing of five people in Dublin, including three children, allegedly by an illegal immigrant. Police have not yet ruled out any motive, including whether it could be terror-related. Douglas, uh, the politicians and police have uh, condemned the riots and blamed hooligans and the far-right to agitators, but you don't have to be far right to be pretty upset by what has occurred and the weak response from authorities. Yes, I mean, the the, demos, the, the um, extraordinary demonization of the public by these politicians and others is quite something. Uh, it's appalling watching people riot like this and burning down cars and, and buses, particularly in Dublin, where 
everyone has memory of that sort of thing happening in not too distant memory. Ireland, by the way, it doesn't seem to be a country which needed a fresh ethno-religious conflict to be inserted into it. But there we go. The brilliance of the politicians of this generation have managed just that. Um, yes, the, the 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 demonization of the public reminds me of just so many times this has happened before. There was in Liverpool earlier this year a schoolgirl uh, propositioned by a uh, an illegal migrant. Uh, local parents who saw the footage of this happening, um, and and there'd been another assault on a local girl. Uh, local parents went to the local asylum centre and protested, and were immediately had all of the press from London and everywhere else coming up saying far right Nazis in Liverpool. I said it, it, mm. it isn't. Maybe there are some nasty elements in it, but but mainly this is parents who don't like the sexual assaults of uh, their daughters. You know, how about that as an explanation? And the same thing with people in Dublin. People in Dublin seem to be understandably irate at the random stabbing of civilians, in, including children, in the middle of the street in Dublin. And, you know, the, 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 just, the, the way in which the politicians keep trying to say um, all the people who object to this must be far right, et cetera, et cetera, it is just a part of the problem, Rita. I mean, as you know, the, mm. the, the, this, has, this has a result. If you keep dampening down public anger, on these sorts of very basic issues, you know, anti-rape uh, of children, uh, anti-stabbing uh, of children. If you try to dampen down abhorrence for such things, what do you get? Well, across the continent, we got another reminder of what you get. You get uh, parties elected to government, which were called far right only a few years ago. And now everyone's going to have to change their language because like Geert Wilders in the Netherlands and like Georgia Maloney in Italy, these people are coming to power. Uh, so maybe those scares far right will stop having the effect that they had. I suspect they will. Douglas Murray, thank you so much for your time this evening. Great pleasure as always.